The Royal Scots and the Cold War, Cyprus, Edinburgh, Munster, the Falkland Islands and Northern Ireland. The period between 1965 and 2006 saw the 1st Battalion embark on a variety of roles in dispersed theatres requiring the mastery of new tactics and equipment, as listed in the table below. Interspersed with the above, and in addition to two two-year-long resident tours in Northern Ireland, were 11 emergency tours in Northern Ireland, each of up to four months duration. In August 1966, the 1st Battalion moved to Osnabrück, converted to the mechanised role in AFV 432 tracked armoured personnel carriers, often referred to as metal monsters. Converting to the role required new skills in driving, vehicle maintenance and radio operating, together with the need to react tactically much more quickly and to navigate at greater speed than before. At the end of the year, having completed a divisional exercise across the North German Plain, the battalion received considerable praise. By the time the 1st Battalion returned home to Tidworth in 1970, they were expert in the me mechanised infantry role, their own cap badge had been restored, they had patrolled the inner German border, and had completed their first emergency tour in Northern Ireland as the 1st Battalion to be sent from the British Army of the Rhine and the 1st Scottish Battalion to be deployed to the province. The 1st Battalion returned to Tidworth in November 1970 to become the British Battalion in the Allied Mobile Force Land. This was a multinational brigade-sized formation whose role was to deploy to the flanks of NATO at short notice. The battalion's priority was to learn to operate in the Arctic of North Norway, in Denmark, and on the southern flank in Italy, Greece and Turkey. Much time was spent on major exercises over the next four years. Although not required to be ski-borne in Norway, the battalion elected to be so and became very proficient in all necessary tactics. They mastered the skills of patrolling, and approach marchers ski oaring behind specialist snow vehicles. They also provided pilots and support staff for the force recce helicopters. A number of endurance races were run, not on racing Langerhans skis, but on wooden military patrol skis, unflatteringly referred to as NATO planks. In contrast to Arctic cold, Mediterranean sun was always welcome. An already busy NATO programme was augmented with three deployments to Northern Ireland at short notice, at 24 hours notice in one case, so not much time was spent in Tidworth. Arriving in Cyprus in May 1974, the 1st Battalion had had more family separation in the previous four years and any other unit in the army. All were looking forward to two years stability as they took over responsibility for the strategic sovereign base area of Episcopi, with Aria Frakatiri nearby. The Royal Scots were no strangers to Cyprus. The 1st Garrison Battalion had deterred the Turkish threat in the Great War, and the 1st Battalion had operated against Eoka insurgents in 1955. In July 1974, President Macarius was deposed by the Cypriot National Guard, all Greek Cypriot, who, as in 1955, sought union with Greece. The situation deteriorated. The Cypriot National Guard forced the Turkish minority into their enclaves. This caused Turkey to invade and the division of the island. In an initial frenetic period, the battalion secured the boundary of the sovereign base area, evacuated the families from nearby Limassol and eventually to the UK, managed a flood of refugees and dealt with a series of internal security incidents. 
The 1st Battalion remained on the island until February 1975, when they returned to Edinburgh to prepare for the next Northern Ireland tour in South Oman. During the tour in Cyprus, a Queen's Gallantry Medal, a British Empire Medal and a Commendation for Gallantry were all awarded. The return from Cyprus to Kirk Newton near Edinburgh in February 1975 was for a little over a year, during which there were ceremonial duties, assistance to the civil authorities during a strike of refuge workers in Glasgow, and a fifth emergency tour in Northern Ireland, this time on the South Omar border. In June 1976, the battalion returned to Munster in West Germany, where they had been briefly in 1951 this time as the NATO Nuclear Convoy Escort Battalion, working closely with 8th Regiment, Royal Corps of Transport, and American troops. This time there were no metal monsters to provide mobility, but land rovers. By May 1979, they were back in Edinburgh at Bedford Barracks, and in May 1980, another four-month deployment to West Belfast. On returning to Redford, Her Royal Highness the Princess Anne presented new colours at a parade at Holyrood in July 1980. In February 1981, the battalion commenced its first two-year resident tour at Ballykinloch in Northern Ireland. On returning from Ballykinloch to Edinburgh, preparations started immediately for the regiment to celebrate 350 years unbroken service to the Crown more than any other infantry regiment in the British Army. During the RS350 year, no less than 74 events were held to mark the anniversary. Principal among these are recorded on this montage. A commemorative medallion was issued to all serving at the time. The highlight was a Royal Review at Holyrood, at the centre of the montage, before Her Majesty the Queen and her daughter, Her Royal Highness the Princess Anne who was to become our Colonel-in-Chief that day. In March 1984, the 1st Battalion deployed for five months to the Falkland Islands with a detachment on South Georgia. A garrison had been maintained there since the defeat of the Argentine invasion in 1982. B Company, was at Port Stanley, D Company, San Carlos, Battalion Headquarters and A Company at Goods Green, and C Company at Fox Bay on West Falkland. On South Georgia, the officer commanding the detachment was also sworn in as a Justice of the Peace and the Postmaster. In April 1985, the battalion returned to the British Army of the Rhine as a mechanised battalion in 33 armour brigade equipped with the familiar AFV 432s and stationed at Verl, once again in metal monsters. Intensive live firing training in Canada, followed by brigade and divisional level exercises in Germany, brought the battalion to peak efficiency. Her Royal Highness the Princess Royal, our Colonel in Chief, visited Pearl twice, the second occasion after conversion to Warrior, the new infantry combat vehicle with a turret-mounted 30mm cannon and improved mobility. By now, it was common for BAOR battalions to carry out emergency tours in Northern Ireland, and the 1st Battalion was no exception, returning for an eighth time to West Belfast from December 1987 to March 1988. 1989 brought the end of the Cold War after 40 years, followed by the tearing down of the Berlin Wall, without a shot being fired. Pensions reduced by the peace dividend were replaced by others as new coalitions took shape. The first battalion was soon to be deployed in one such to liberate Kuwait from Iraqi invasion. Mm -hmm. 